welcome back to Sharks Happen. My name is Hal, I'm your host, going over shark attacks from the 1900s till present, mostly large sharks, and we'll get started right away. Heading over to Santa Barbara Channel, which is off of California. Uh, the date is July 27th, 1935. Dr. Alfred Wilkes, 50 years old, he and his son Barney, who's 23, they decide they're going out onto the channel, they're in their boat, and their boat capsizes. Um, no information on how the boat had capsized, but they had to hang on to the boat throughout the night. Um, Dr. Wilkes is hanging on, and in the morning, he kind of slides down into the water, um, pretty much exhausted, and a shark comes up and bites him on the ankle. His son's able to grab onto him, and Barney pulls him back up onto the boat, but Barney says that that attracted more sharks, and there was as many of a, as a dozen sharks circling around them and not trying to get at his dad. Um, some of them do, some of them come up and get another bite of him. Uh, they say that he passed away from drowning, uh, but he did lose his grip and get in the water and got bit in the ankle, or bit in the leg, but I don't think that would have, uh, you know, caused him to die. He probably drowned when he went into the water there and that was it, and that's how they went ahead and uh, looked into it. They must have found some water in his lungs. So. Barney's still trying to keep the sharks from his dad. Another shark gets on a wave and gets up and gets a nice bite out of his dad's side. Gets a hold of him in his side and pulls him back down. Barney gets him back up onto the boat. And now a shark jumps up onto the bottom of the boat and slides off of the boat. But Barney's kicking at the sharks to keep him off and he gets bit in the ankle before he gets rescued. Uh, rescue comes and, and the gentleman who rescued him said there was visible shark bites uh, on both of them. And so, you know, Barney had his foot and his dad had multiple bites from the sharks. Uh, we're going to put it down as an, uh, an uh, I'm not even going to put it down as an attack. Um, these ones where they're, you know, boats flipped over, you know, you get attacked, you get attacked, but it sounds like he drowned first, and the only thing I'm going to do is put this down as one attack on Barney and an attempt to predate on two people. So one attack, two attempts to predate, uh, even though the dad was passed away, they still wanted to try to eat him, so, and they didn't know. So that's how I'm going to mark this down, a one and two on that one, and uh, that's our story of Alfred Wilkes. Now we head to Cape St. Francis, which is a popular beach over in South Africa. The date is April 8th, 2001. Dunstan Hogan, he is 46 years old. He went out in the morning uh, to get in some surfing, early morning by himself, so he's out there alone. And he gets himself at about 9.30 in the morning, he gets himself about 250 feet off of shore in eight foot deep water and all of a sudden he feels the clamping pressure on his body on his like his hip his leg and his surfboard so he's clamped to his surfboard and he's lifted up out of the water and now he's being pulled down into the water with his surfboard he's hanging onto his surfboard with all his might and the shark takes him down to the bottom it's eight feet deep and he can feel his feet hit the sand uh, now he opens his eyes. He must have shut his eyes when this was going on. He opens his eyes and he says he can see sand kicked up everywhere. So it kicked up the silt from the bottom of the floor and that's all up. And, but he says he can see a, a, a black shadow amongst us and can tell that this is a shark. And he ends up letting go of his board. His board pops up to the surface and Shark must have let him go because right after that he pops to the surface. He says he used his leg leash to the board to be able to drag the board to him and climbed on it. He started paddling to shore and then the shark started coming at him from shore where he's paddling. Now the shark's coming at him a second time and hits him again and releases him and swims away. He ends up getting back onto his board, paddling his way in and he gets himself some help and he ends up surviving. He needed 50 clips to be able to close up the, uh, the wounds that he had. He had wounds to his hip, to his rear, uh, his lower leg, and to his arm. I believe it was left arm. So he was cut up pretty good, needed 50 clips to be able to close that up, but he did survive. We'll put it down as an attack, not an attempt to predate. Um, it's unusual for a juvenile. They said it was about a three meter uh, great white. And, you know, those attacks on surfboards, it's usually just a one hit and that's it. So it came back at him a second time. Um, but it seemed to have left on its own. He didn't even mention that he fought it off or anything. It just made one more run at him before it left. 
Um, so, you know, we're, I'm not going to put it down as an as a, a, a attempt to eat. I'm just putting it down as an attack, and that's it. Okay, now we head over to Bird Rock, which is off Tamales Point in California. The date is August 13th, 1996. Column Tinley, he's 36 years old, and him and two other friends, they had been looking, they were scouting around for some abalone, and they had had no luck on the north side of Bird Rock, so they went and took their four meter inflatable boat and went to the south side of Bird Rock. Uh, after scouting it out for a couple seconds, Colum decided to go ahead and dive in. He dives in and he swims down, gets himself an abalone, comes back to the surface. It's about 30 feet deep of water. He comes back to the surface and he checks uh, to make sure it's legal. It's under the 18 centimeter, I believe it is, uh, uh, size limit, so it's a legal one. He must have put it in something and he's diving back down and he's like I said a hundred hundred feet from shore and He's in 30 feet deep water, and it's about 1115 And he's been in the water five minutes, and he gets about 18 feet deep anywhere 15 to 18 feet deep almost just past halfway down and He notices a dark shape off to his left. There's something in the water and then he quickly realizes that it is a large great white shark. Um, it's lower than him in the water column, but it quickly makes an abrupt movement towards him and upwards, so it's coming right at him. It grabs a hold of him, and he says he doesn't. He says he had his hands out because the shark was coming, and he doesn't even know where the shark ended up biting him. The shark lifted him right up out of the water, so it hit him at about 18 feet deep and took him right up and out of the water, and then. Uh, Took him back down under, and which point it repurchased, it let go and re-grabbed a hold of him when it got about six to eight feet deep. It re-grabbed him again and then quickly let him go and just swam off. He was able to do a five meter swim to the skiff, so he was five meters from the four foot and infl four meter inflatable they used. And they pulled him up on there and he is a trauma center nurse. So he went ahead and assessed his own damage and they ended up getting him in to be able to get some help and they get him in. He gets uh, all the surgery he needed. He, he ended up with a, uh, a bite to the left arm, a uh, bite to his shoulder, a bite to his abdomen, and I believe that's all the bite marks that he, the bite wounds that he had, but his nerves were so bad off that he was only gonna regain 90% of his use of his left hand again. Um, and they had to do some nerve grafting to be able to give him 90% of the use of the hand. Uh, so it's an attack and a survival. Um, again, putting this down as an attack, not an attempt to predate, and we'll move on. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Harara City, which is Okinawa, Japan. J the date is July 23rd, 1996. Uh, Mara Yoshi Takahara, he is 52 years old, and he is out with a group of divers. He's in the boat and he's watching out for sharks for the divers that are in the water. They're doing a coral survey for a, a marine building project that they're looking to get done. And he decides to enter the water. Shortly after he enters the water, he's attacked by a shark. It's another boat captain that sees him struggling in the water and goes over to his assistance and pulls him out of the water. Um, he's taken in and give, trying to give him help, but he passes away shortly after he arrived at the hospital. Uh, he was bitten in the, in the chest and in the in the abdomen, so he had two. It sounded like pretty bad bites to both of them, and uh, he died from blood loss, and there was nothing that they were able to do with him. Um, it was kind of ironic seeing as he was supposed to be on watch for the sharks to keep others safe, and he ends up jumping in the water and gets attacked by sharks anyway. So that's our story of um, Moriyoshi. And now we're going to head over to Honeymoon Island, which is about 25 miles east of Hopetown, uh, western Australia, the date, September 11, 1995. David Weir, uh, he is 29 years old, and he is going out to do some hookah diving, and he's uh, going for abalone. It's about 3 in the afternoon. He's in about 30 feet deep water, and he dives in, and right after he dives in, they see a swirl of water. The boat tender name is Dave Lashman. He's 21, and he's on the boat. He's supposed to stay on the boat, make sure everything goes well. He sees a swirl of water, and then he sees a large shark 
fin knifing through the water and then blood below the surface starts spreading and he quickly backs the boat up and goes ahead and grabs onto the hookah hose and pulls it up and it's just slack there's there's no man on the bottom of it and then his the diver body comes to the surface and he's able to grab a hold of it but he loses his grip and the body sinks and that's the last they know of it um, he ended up taking the boat and driving it right up into the sand he beached the boat and then fishermen there drove him into Hope Town to be able to report the tragedy. And then another fisherman drove him another 50 kilometers to be able to be treated for uh, shock himself from what he went through trying to save the body. So he had to go get help. Um, there was no sign of the victim until two days later when there's two different reports. Um, one of them from back near the time that this happened says that his, uh, the victim's head shoulder and arm so i'm thinking the shoulder and arm connected and then his head washed up on shore um, other reports i see says that the body washed up on shore minus the head and the shoulder and the arm um, i don't know which is which either way it's just you know tragic so we're going to put that down as an attack and an attempt to predate uh, by a great white shark they said it's about a five meter great white shark um, so you're talking 17 footer which is a very large shark and that's our story, an attack, an attempt to eat. Okay, we're gonna finish out the show today with You Don't Hear That Every Day. Um, we're gonna go to Fiji in late May 1995. I have to read this name, it's Kinijioji Vindovi, 69 years old. So in late May of 1995, um was among six men that were uh, sleeping throughout the night on a 16 foot fishing boat and a 12 foot shark leaps out of the water, lands on the boat, and is able to grab him, bite his leg, nearly severing his leg, um, and nearly severing his hand. Um, so I'm thinking it probably bit his leg and he went to go ahead and hit it or something and it got his hand too. Uh, they went ahead, sounds like they were able to get the shark off the boat, and then they tried to get the boat in to get him help, but the winds were so strong it was taking them forever to get in. By the time they get him onto a, onto a hospital bed, he ends up passing away from his wounds. Um, you know, another crazy story, We've that makes about five. Um, four jumping in a boat and one jumping up and grabbing that boy off of the boat. So, uh, you know, you're not safe in a boat. <laughs> it's just insane. So, uh, that's our story of Kinijioji. And we're going to put that down as an attack and not an attempt to predate. I mean, it landed in the boat. It was probably freaking out and biting whatever was around it. So, uh, that's our story of Kinijioji. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'll be back in a couple days with another show of attacks. But if you go into that water, remember, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.